I'll continue. So, uh, so that's that's the wrong key. Say if uh, it is zero, then this is, this two will be dependent, which is quite uh, you can see that in, uh, quite strict for the man. Let's say if they are if they are, if they are uh, like uh, depend on each other, so one is the constant multiplied by the other, say y two is just some constant times y one. And this this column will be proportional to that column, so the obviously the determinant will be zero. Just two column just basically proportional to each other. If you, you know all these uh, linear algebra things, still remember all these things. <laughs> if you don't don't remember, you can check it. Okay, so um, so we check whether this is zero, and now the we are applying to the Bessel equation. Now, uh, any 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 of them, so either the J function or the Y function, uh, and actually it would it turns out that the even modified Bessel Bessel equation will have the we have similar form, and the idea is that. Uh, we can calculate the wrong scheme by just fixing a constant. The reason it's uh, uh, we can see by, by the equation. So like uh, if you go back to the like just use the J function, so you have a uh, x square and sub it, you can use a non integer object J sub multiple prime and then plus x radio pi and then plus x square minus u square which is u that equals zero right and so that's the best equation so one solution obviously is say something new and uh, there can be other solution so linearly or non-linear or linearly dependent or not dependent and um, so we talk about that, uh, like if new is not integer, then either new or minus new will be two independent solution. And but if if new is integer, then uh, then it's not uh, j sub minus n just depends on j sub. We, we talk about this before. J sub minus n is minus one. And is, um, right, so they are linearly dependent. You substitute that uh, j, j n and j minus n. One screen obviously would be zero, right? Uh, and then uh, for that case, uh, you need to define this y, this Neumann function. So for for a given n, the uh, uh, two independent solution would be J sub n and y sub n. Okay. And then the, the definition of why all these are Neumann functions are given by the, uh, the first equation in this section, 1457. Okay. So that's, that's fine. So you have uh, more than one solution. Now you can check whether the, what, what is the form of this one scheme. Right. Uh, and the idea is that uh, um, first, uh, your the textbook uh, put is first put it in a, a so-called self-adjoint form that uh, you you learn uh, uh, in whatever what chapter is it is, and then. Uh, Whatever that, uh, then, then there's a discussion that in self adjoint form, then, uh, then the one scheme is proportional to the coefficient of, of the first, co I mean, the first term. But you don't have to do that. See, if you have a, if ODEs like, like uh, this one. And what we'll do, what, 
what we can do is just we write that they let's call this y so y double pi and divided by x squared over the other uh, all the terms and you have x squared and then this divided by that is one over x y pi minus e squared y as it turns out, this is not important. Okay, so uh, then the wrong skin is given by this one. And now uh, what you want to do is just uh, calculate the derivative of the, the wrong skin. So W prime plus can you write down the W prime or even by the matrix form? Can you write down the W prime? The derivative of this matrix uh, right away. Do you know how to do that? Did I talk about that? Did I talk about that? You, you didn't talk. I didn't talk. I mean, this is two by two. You can write it also y1, y2 pi minus y2, y1 pi, and then get the derivative. That's kind of easy. But uh, yeah, that that's uh, for. For two by two matrix is uh, straightforward. Uh, you can do that. Uh, say like uh, if you if this differential equation is the fourth order or five fifth order, <laughs> then uh, the one skin becomes a uh, like four for four fourth order. Yeah, y one, y two, y three, four, y one prime, y two, y three prime, pi. Just write down the the one skin takes it to the home. Like double pi. Triple pi. That's a lot of what I do. Just just try uh write the one skin. So now if I ask you to write that write the the derivative of this one skin, how do you do that? I don't know. You haven't, you know, never learn about that. So that we consider this. Uh, this is I, I what I tell you. Learn from me, okay? <laughs> the W prime will be simply just just like the distribution rule. Uh, if if you have a a function that is uh, with a four factor, the distribution rule is just that that uh, you take the derivative you. The first term we will take like uh, take the derivative of the first factor, and then the second term we'll be taking the derivative of the second factor, and so on. All together, you have four term, four terms, right? And the same similarly in here. So, and what is what you can do is this: the first there will be four term four terms. The first term is just take the derivative of the first row, and it's easier to take the row. You can do it by column, but in this case, uh, doing it by row is better. So that would be y1 pi, y2 pi, y3 pi, y4 pi. And then uh, uh, just copy everything. Just the copying took a lot of time. Right. Uh, so if you write, want to do a delete by, by the Writing out all all the terms, you know how, how many terms in a four by four matrix? Can you tell me how many terms? Anyone know? I just write this. Give me some time when I write this. <laughs> Anyone? How many terms in a, if you write, write a general four by four matrix, how, how many terms do you want to write it out specifically? So two by two matrix have two terms, right? And how about three by three matrix? Three by three matrix, how many terms? You use, use the cost, uh, whatever that. Uh, Three terms over one side, three terms over the other, six terms, right? And four by four matrix, maybe. It's, 
it's like a factorial thing. Two factorial, three factorial. <laughs> it's four by four with four factorial. So four factorial. What is four factorial? Twenty-four. There will be twenty-four turns, and then you if you use the usual distribution rule and take the because each term is a product of four elements. So that would be twenty-four times four would be ninety-six. <laughs> you want to do that uh, with lots of writing. Even this has lots of writing, but it's easier because actually I'm writing more than I need. Because this is the first first term. Let me write down the second term. I'm writing it once so that uh, to show the the principle. But uh, once you do it, once once you do it once, you you don't need to write that many. Um, that many terms. Actually, there were only one terms left. That's the second term, right? Take the first term, take the derivative of the first. Row the second term take the derivative of a second row. Likewise, the first third term will be taking the derivative of the third row. Okay. Okay. okay, the last term is taking the derivative of the the fourth row. And that would be fourth. I'm using the fourth order as an example because uh, that just to illustrate that uh, if you're not using this method, you get a mess. If two by two, you can do it the traditional way because you have two terms, so it's quite easy. But uh, starting from fourth order, fifth order, sixth order, Kind of impossible to write them. Now the, I'm writing down more than I need because uh, now I can have simplification. Anyone can see it, simplification right away. I want to see. It. I have four. I have four of them. Three of them will be zero. Which three will be zero? Can you see that right away? No. I, I already mentioned the, the rule of derivative, right? You have uh, one, uh, what, what we did, uh, you have one column is proportional to another column or equals to another column, that is exactly zero. And the same applies to row. If one row is the same as the other row or proportional to the other row, then it would be zero. First. Yeah, that's zero because this, call, this row is the same as this row, it's zero. This row is the same as this row. Zero. This row is the, the same as this row. Only this apply. Okay. Is that okay? Please, can you see that? If you have determinant, you have two row. You, this is exactly the same. Two row is the same, but it don't have to be the same. Let's say if it, they just propose each other with a, the same constant. That is still zero. Uh, then you, you, it's fixed. <laughs> I don't remember that. Uh, you learned uh, in the whatever you learned in uh, matrix or in the algebra. Have a, yeah, that uh, that's another way to, to 
I don't want to go. I mean, this branching out too too much. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I can show you quite easily. So, but anyway, uh, let's go back to you. So now this is the rule. This this apply the fourth order. But any order is just the same, and the wrong skin is always just basically just taking the into of the last row. If you have if you have five of them, then you have another 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 row. It's, it's a five by five matrix, but you still just keep the last, just take the derivative of the last row. Last row. <laughs> that simplify a last. So um, now we are part of here. So basically it's y1, y2, y1 double row, y2 double row. And now, um, to evaluate that, you can go back to this uh, equation. So it's, uh, it's the first row is the same, y1, y2. The second row, you just use the Bessel equation, y1 double prime is, just put these all to the right hand side, right? So minus one, minus y1. Y1 prime of the X and uh, minus, uh, minus mu square of X square. This turns out to be not important. Y1, right, not prime. And the same for the second term, minus Y2 prime of X and minus mu square of X square Y2 Okay, you can accept that. So just plug in the, the equation back to here. Okay? Now, uh, more simplification, because uh, so the second row has two terms, right? The one, one has this uh, y1, the other has this y2, and using the same, same property, if this is proportional, this column, it's proportional to, for this term, the second term is proportional to the first row. So actually, you can ignore the second second part just because they're proportional to the, to the first row. So that would give zero contribution. This two term would give zero contribution. So that's what we just said. Okay. And then for this one, both have the same factor. You can hold the factor out of the uh, determinant, so that is minus one of x, y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. Right. Um, and that, uh, that is exactly uh, minus. Minus W over X. Okay. Okay, so. Well, then uh, we can solve for what, what W is. This is just a differential equation for the wrong scheme. Right. Uh, and that uh, for for this particular solution, so for this particular one, there's there's more than one solution because uh, you have a uh, you have this uh, just whatever x. The certain power x will, will satisfy that, right? Uh, see, we can just do it by just like the usual way to of, of doing solving differential equations. So dw over w equals to minus dx over x that implies log w equals to x. 
Yes, some constant, obviously. W. We solve it so combining this W times X is equal to the constant, or so W equals the con some constant. It doesn't have to be a sentence. The constant, yeah. The, the wrong scheme. Okay. So for the Bessel equation, without going through the, all the self adjoint put it in the self adjoint form, we can show that the one screen goes to this one. This is just uh, equation 14 from 64. Okay, I guess that's the, that's the most difficult part for you. Uh, the, what you're asking for, you don't exactly know why, how you get the, that equation out. Once you get the equation, then the rest is just uh, substitute the form of the Bessel equation, and then you evaluate the, whatever the constant, whatever y1, y2 you substitute in, then uh, you find a, a way to evaluate these two at a certain limit so that uh, you get this constant out. And uh, the two, two uh, possibility, a two easier way, I mean, one is in the limit of small x, and the other in the limit of large x. So both you can do do, do that too, because I mean the force force is in there. There's uh, lots of terms, right? So special function has lots of terms. But uh, for small x, you can keep just the leading order, and likewise for the large x, you can use the asymptotic expression and keep just the leading order term and Use that to, to fix the, the C, C value. Okay, then we can, we can do a, an example uh, for that. But up to here, is it? Is that okay? So here, I can show it to you. You get, uh, <laughs> can you hear what we're talking about? Here, right? So, okay, you can follow. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Second derivative. Why is it? This is this this equation, the Bessel equation. This is. I'm calculating the one scheme for the Bessel equation. These are solutions for Bessel equation. So I have two solutions, y sub one and y sub two, and they satisfy this equation. Then you can see, so y double pi is just whatever here, you put it on the other side, which is just this and that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No problem. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, before I uh, went on to, to say, give an example of that. So, uh, whenever I talk about this, I, I, I just, uh, very, very strange. I don't know whether most people, most students haven't learned about this, how to do the derivative of, of, of the matrix. Have you learned about that? That in that point? No. It's amusing for me because that's, that's a little story about myself. <laughs> so when I was like you, uh, in, I first entered the graduate school, so the first semester, I'm a professor. You probably know the professor, Swanson. <laughs> so, uh, whatever. So, I, so, so I joined, joined his research. So, and he has a tendency of uh, going through his his whatever his theory or his what the program to derive all everything uh, from the beginning. So he likes to do that. He like just like to derive everything from the very beginning, even though everything is uh, written down. You know, he re derives everything from the blackboard. <laughs> I never learned about that. Never learned. His way of doing is just keep on redividing the same thing. Next time we'll keep redividing the same thing. <laughs> so I joined him uh, 
so he went through the his equation, the whatever the, that uh, uh, his formulation. So one after after a few times he went to he has a fourth order equation, so called Pandering equation, and uh, the Pandering equation at, can have any order, but the the, the most uh, common one that he uses fourth order. So he has a long skin, <laughs> and then he used a numerical solution. He has this numerical program to solve the Pandering equation, and he's found four four equation four solution. And then he found out numerically the one skin is a constant. And, and that's quite quite some something because you you actually use numerical method to solve for four of them and then you calculate the determinant of this one skin and then determine that they are actually constant. Constant, I mean over the whole range of domain of the, the, the integration. And that's something. But he said he couldn't, after that point, after he divide everything, and then he said uh, he, he has that numerical result, but he couldn't figure out how to, what, why this is so, and he couldn't figure out what, 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 that, what, uh, what the reason. And uh, I said, uh, I, I, of course, I'm not that smart, so, so I don't need to think about that. I just keep that in mind, and then uh, after, after, after the, the the section I go back to my room or what I don't remember exactly where. And then just take out a paper and then start the variation. And then I just using this and it showed that is W prime is zero. So W must be constant. It's the reason for that is uh for that fourth order equation, the fourth derivative doesn't have uh, doesn't have a third derivative. Uh, only de depends on the second derivative function. So therefore, if you use the same trick here, then that would be zero. This thing will also be zero. It has only, ha only will be non-zero if it depends on, if the, if the equation has the third order derivative inside, then that will become a proportion of the one skin, just like here, just like here. But uh, for that equation, you don't have to have but we did look at zero, no, I, yeah, the question for true as a constant. So I wrote up it, uh, a, a page, uh, and then give it to him the next day. And, and that's, that's not the most amusing part for me. That, that kind of routine, I mean, and they're not routine, but it's, it's something happened, but not that strange. But then the next week, uh, he keep on. So after I gave him to him, he keep on dividing, dividing. And then, uh, uh, that is a lot of, uh, a lot of things you might not know, but after it, it get into the so-called, uh, uh, the adjoint equation for that equation. And he found out that, uh, there's some, uh, three by three matrices that is consist for using the solution for the, the original equation, and those satisfy the adjoint equation. <laughs> and, and again, he determined that they set satisfy the adjoint equation numerically. So that just means a, a, a lot of numerical work has to go, go into that to show that the, all these uh, determinants are the solution of the, the adjoint equation numerically, show that numerically. But then he, he didn't know. Big reason he <laughs> couldn't prove that. And then I, I said this up there. Oh my God. He said, uh, here you go again. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope, of course, I get, again, I, I didn't, I didn't say anything. And I'm not that smart to figure that out. And then we'll go back. And then I, now I, we, we, I divide that. Now this time is a lot real long, the two pages. And then I, <laughs> I showed that using the same method, same method for taking the of the, Matrices, and I swear that they indeed satisfy the joint equation. I can give it back to him the next day. <laughs> <laughs> this thing only happened once in a lifetime. So I, ne I never have that experience with him later. 
<laughs> Maybe he's, he's, he's a good physicist for that. Just the numerical part, I learned a lot of him from doing all the numerical things. But sometimes it's true that even a great physicist, sometimes you get, just get stuck on some tricky thing. If you have, haven't really thought about something, it's, these things are very true. Here. Yeah. If you haven't thought about it, then you don't know it, it gets stuck. <laughs> I mean, every time I, I talk about this thing, I just got remember all these things. Many, many years ago, uh, I mean, it's 30 something years ago, 1990, something like that. More than 30 years ago. So. <laughs> well, he is not with us now. He's had to pass away. So he's not, not, not saying that anything bad about it. He's, 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 he's great. But, uh, this thing happened. Okay, so example to calculate this, so like uh, the first one, uh, j nu, j minus u. Uh, that, that would be the easier one. Right? So anyway, uh, you just keep the reading all the term. So j nu, we go back to the, the first equation. In, um, in the equation in first section, you have the, the series solution. If we use the small x expansion, that if we write the, where is it? That would be in uh, 14.6. So new. So. Let's see our function. And this applies to uh, to non-indigent you. Right, obviously, and I mean for non-negative integers, so for for integer, positive integer is fine. The reason is that uh, the gamma function is singular at the non-integer value and zero, so you remember, remember the part two, the gamma function. Um, but that is enough. So even for positive integer, you can say so n. For negative integer, you just use that. You don't don't use this. Is anymore. Okay, uh, then we just take the the when x goes to zero, you just keep the smallest small uh, the, the largest term which involves uh, uh, only the leading order. Right. Uh, obviously, that is for. Uh, 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 S is S is zero. So when S is C, S is zero is the first term, right? So as X goes to zero, then uh, you just keep the first term, so minus one to the new and new to the two and new. That X goes to zero, wait, X goes to zero. We are we are going we're choosing the small limit of this function, this is a function because x is going to zero, so the largest term among this summation should be given by s equal, only the s equal zero, right? So you can set that to zero, just keep this term, and this is zero factorial, just one, and then this is beyond uh, new plus one. Okay, now we can, uh, Right. One one more thing. This is J new, right? In the one scheme, you need the uh, you need the uh, J prime also. Right? You need J new prime, which is just take a root of that. So that turns to uh, minus one new over new uh, over two x new minus one. 
Right. And now you can go back to the, the talking back to the wrong scheme. So you have the derivative and the, uh, the function of the derivative. Just put it back to the wrong scheme. The formula over here. So, um, just, just like, uh, Okay, right. Except that why well, he doesn't keep the minus one. Right. Okay, let's let's uh let's keep doing it so. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, yeah, quick. yeah, go ahead. Um, is it x equals zero or s equals zero? X equals zero, yeah. Yeah. Trying to ask the same question. So x equals zero. This is the limit. You, you want to evaluate this one skin at x tends to zero because it doesn't matter. The one skin is always something, a constant divided by x. All you need to do now is fix the constant. Okay, so you can evaluate at any x, but the turns out to be easier. Uh, at the small x limit, because you only need to keep one term. Okay, if you have, okay. Uh, yeah. so that's that's the trick to evaluate that. Okay, so that uh, that's a uh, yeah, that's phase. Okay, now uh, one skin of like. J nu and J minus nu. Now would be uh, J nu is just exactly this one minus one nu. Uh, X T nu. Right, that's that. That's the first element, and then J minus nu. J minus mu is just changing everything to minus mu. And then we have x to minus mu. Okay. And then J nu prime is just this one. J minus one mu. Mu over two. X over two. Mu minus one. Oh, I, I, thought, I forgot. I was just down there. And then the sec this is uh, j min j sub minus mu pi, which is the same thing except uh, changing mu to minus mu. Minus mu over two. Minus mu minus one. Oh yeah, this is minus mu. J minus mu. Okay. So now you just evaluate that, you know, this times that minus this times that. When you multiply these together, you have this uh, minus one to the new times mi this minus one. Minus one to the minus two basically cancel, it becomes just one, right? And then uh, x over two to the new and x over two to the minus new also cancel. And the only thing left is x over two uh, inverse, right? Likewise, you yeah. have this the same thing here. You just subtract this product of these two from the product of these two. So uh, just write out explicitly. What is left is this factor minus mu over two, and then divided by x over two. And then you have these two gamma functions multiply each other. Gamma mu plus one, gamma minus mu plus one. And so that's uh, from these two, right? And then uh, for this one, it's the same thing. The only thing 
different. This 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 is mu over two, and then but you subtract by that mu over two. And the same thing is uh, the rest should be the same. This is also x over two in the denominator, and then the same two gamma function multiply together. Okay, so, so it turns out that these two are the same, right? These two are the, basically they, they, are, they are the same. So you just basically just keep one term, just multiply by two, it turns out. Right. So uh, now compare this with that, you can fix the constant. Maybe. C over x, you have an x here, the c will be the west. Uh, c over just you have a minus sign and two. Okay, c if I find it correctly. Uh, minus, uh, yeah, I forgot the g, minus two in here. This will be in here. Minus two new, gamma new plus one, gamma uh, minus new plus one. Yeah, the same. All right, so uh, so you can, if you want, you can stop here, but uh, there's, you can also use the formula for the gamma function. So uh, we call it the quarter formula that, that we, we, we used, uh, I think, in, in one time. We we'll talk about that when we look that up to the Okay, say it again. Oh, I, I'm, I'm calculating this C because one skin is C over X. Okay, so the one skin has an X, but then uh, I'm just calculating constant because the one over X is coming out from this in this limit. So whatever lab is the constant C. Okay. All right. So you can uh, you can write uh, see which formula we can use. This is uh, you have C gamma C one minus C. Uh, C minus C. This is not exactly minus, but uh, you can also, um, yeah, you can use, you can, because this is not the convenience form, so you can use this, uh, the usual formula C plus one. Let's see. I think that would be easier. So, uh, so applying to this, so that becomes a, this is a one. So, so you pull down the, for well, the first term becomes a new gamma, because this, this is the C, new gamma. For the second factor is minus new gamma, minus new source. So, uh, Minus 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 new score. Okay. And that equals the two of a new. And now you have to form that. Uh, okay. Let me just write it out. New. Minus new. And that is, uh, I don't know whether I, uh, in. Equation thing like like what is that here? Uh, in equation in equation thirteen point twenty three. Uh, originally it's gamma z and times gamma one minus z. But uh, you don't use the same trick to show that this is just minus z. Gamma minus C, and just just use the same uh, same formula here, and then gamma C. 
to. And that equals to the right hand side is pi times sine pi z. Okay, so you have exactly uh, this kind of formula. You have new gamma, gamma evaluate new gamma minus mu. So that's exactly this one except the minus sign. So you can just use that and keep the minus sign. So we keep the minus two. This is in the denominator. So that's sine pi z up high new and then divided by pi. You want to get rid of the new. Yeah, minus two sine pi new. Right. This is the, the constant. So the one skin is that one divided by x. Okay. So that's uh that's uh one way to evaluate the long screen. And other way is using asymptotic uh, relation with factory transfer to be easier. You know, don't have this all these gamma functions. Uh, but uh, we haven't learned we haven't wrapped up to that point you know, in asymptotic formula. But later on we'll, we'll we'll look at that and you can Use the asymptotic series to evaluate the one skin. We get exactly the same same answer, but it's slightly easier. Okay.